Hey, it's Earth Castle. Today I'll teach you how to use the tools in the hammer editor. The tools are these things on the side. Whether it's shaping terrain or putting in smaller details, these tools are the core of source mapping. The first one is the selection tool. The selection tool lets you move entities, brushes, decals, and pretty much everything in the map. This is useful if you want to adjust the shape of a brush, or move something into another place. Without this tool, everything would be stuck where you place it, which isn't very good. The next two tools are kind of useless, and I have no idea what they do, so I'll just skip over them for now. I've never even heard anyone mention them, and I even couldn't figure out what their purpose is, so they're probably not that important. If they are, make sure to comment below, and I'll make a second part or something. The next tool is the Entity tool. This tool allows you to place entities in your map. Entities is basically a fancy word for props, but it's not limited to props. Most of the time you'll see them as barrels, food containers, or furniture and maps. They're basically the smaller things that the next tool can't create. Though entities aren't limited to props, they can also be turned into more technical things, like different triggers that makes things happen when walked over, nodes that tell NPCs where to walk, or these green guys that tell the map where to spawn the player. If you couldn't already tell, these guys are what my YouTube character is based off. The next tool is the brush tool. The brush tool is used for larger, less complex objects like walls, floors, and roofs. It's like the bare bones of a map. You pretty much need these in a map, since without them you'd have no floor or no walls to your buildings. The next tool is the texture application tool. This is a pretty complex one, and has a lot of functions in one tool. The main function is selecting single faces of brushes and applying textures to single faces. As you can see here, if I select the texture of this orange block, I can put it only on one side of the brush. This can be used for multi-textured walls, floors, or pretty much anything like that. The other thing this tool has to offer are displacements. With displacements, you can shape the ground to your liking by pulling up or pushing down parts of the floor or make a floor that seamlessly blends in with another texture or floor. If you want more information on this, I'd recommend checking out my video on how to make nature in Hammer, which goes much more into depth about this tool. I'll leave a card for it up here. The next tool is the decal tool. The decal tool lets you apply certain textures onto walls and floors, sort of like a poster. They are completely flat and just add little things like graffiti, carpets, or stains to your map. But don't be fooled, these can go a long way in making your maps look a lot better. Trust me, I use them a bit too much. Just make sure to be using a decal texture when using this tool, since those are the only ones that will properly work with this tool. The next tool is the overlay tool. This is pretty much identical to the decal tool but apparently it's better for storage, and much better overall, or something. I personally find decals much easier to use, but I can see why someone might want to use this tool. As far as I can tell, there aren't really many differences from the decal tool other than that. The next two tools are very similar, so I've grouped them together. The first one is the clipping tool. This tool basically lets you cut brushes in half diagonally, horizontally, vertically, whatever way you want. Think about it like slicing the brush with a katana, or chiseling away at the brush. With this tool, you can make very complex shapes, such as these ones. The next tool is the vertex tool. I'd watch out around this one, as it is extremely buggy, and should not be used too often. This tool lets you stretch different parts of brushes, and pull them outwards from the brush, making points like these. This can be very good in complex architecture, but generally is a little too much for the average map. But it still is useful. The next tool is the sprinkle tool. This lets you place multiple of the same props at once. This is useful for large amounts of certain props, like the garbage props or trees. 
Other than that, it's not that useful in my opinion, but still has its own niche. The final tool is the Fitix tool. This tool is only in Hammer++, so if you're using the original Valve Hammer, you probably won't have this one. This tool lets you simulate how your brushes would act if given physics. This tool is fun to mess around with, and it lets you use Valve's physics engine in editor. But other than that, it's not that practical unless you want some sort of realistic simulation for rubble or walls or an object or something. And that's pretty much all the tools. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed, make sure to check out my other hammer related content, and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.